I live in a county that's been having lots of wildfires lately, so I decided to put sprinklers on my roof. And so this is how I did it. I teed off of the line from the well with three quarter inch um, copper pipe. And this is the valve that turns on the sprinklers. And there I put in a outlet to act as a drain in the winter time. And the uh, copper lines go across the wall and then they go up the side of the house and up there they go through the roof and now we'll go up on the roof. Here's where the uh, water line comes through the roof and I made the connection with a flexible connector that's usually used for connecting to water heaters. And the flashing I made from some aluminum uh, sheet metal I had on stock and two Fancy Feast cat food cans, one on the top and one on the bottom. And the copper lines go up here. And this is a concrete block that I cast to hold down the pipes. I made 10 of these and later on I'll, in the video I'll show you the forms that I used. And the copper lines go through a one inch PVC pipe that's cast into the block. So the line goes along here and there's an extension line that goes down over my garage and there's a sprinkler at the end of that line and this bend here I did with a conduit bender and here's the first house sprinkler I transitioned from three-quarter inch copper to one-half inch copper and then that's a Rainbird brass sprinkler head that shoots over a 40-foot radius. So it covers all of the roof and uh, some of the perimeter beyond. And then the line goes along and there's another sprinkler head there. So I have a total of three sprinkler heads for a 20 for about a 2,000 square foot house plus attached two-car garage. I used about uh, 90 feet of three-quarter inch copper lines for this job and I used copper because um, plastic uh, pipe which is the alternative wouldn't stand up very well to the constant sun that the roof is exposed to Plus, you know, cop, um, plastic can melt in fires. Because they tend to turn off the power during wildfires, I uh, installed this generator system to power my well. I got this cabinet on um, Craigslist. It's a safety cabinet, which was originally designed to house flammables. It's made out of 12 gauge double wall steel and weighs over 400 pounds. And so my generator lives in that and the door normally is kept locked. And when the generator is running the door is kept open and I installed a fan that exhausts the uh, generator fumes. The fan is powered by the generator when it's running. And it's powered by these two propane tanks. The pro propane goes up through those tubes to the pressure regulator and then comes down this pipe and goes through the wall and connects to the generator. 
the generator can run on propane or gas, but the advantage of propane is the fuel doesn't go bad. Uh, gas in the tank can degrade over time and clog your carburetor, so running it on propane avoids that. So the uh, 240 volt power from the generator goes through this yellow cord over to the manual transfer switch that's in this box. And I move the lines from the well and the refrigerator into this box. And it's normally powered, they're normally powered by the utility power and then you flip that switch and the generator power takes over. And the cord plugs into a socket in the bottom of the box. And I got the box on Amazon as I did the generator. And the cord. So here's the form that I made to cast the concrete hold down blocks. I made three of these out of 5 8 inch plywood that I had on hand. And uh, I cast a total of 10 blocks using five 60 pound bags of concrete mix. And I reinforced the blocks with the, st the steel uh, that I cut from galvanized pig fencing and bent into shape. And for the um, blocks over the garage where I didn't have a ridge vent that I had to go around, I filled up the, the bottom spaces there with half inch styrofoam. And the form is held together while it's being cast with screws. And I painted the form each time before I poured the concrete with 30 weight motor oil as uh, so that the uh, you could pull the form away from the concrete. And the indents here held the one inch PVC in place while I was uh, pouring the blocks. And the blocks are so heavy, I think they weigh 35 to 40 pounds each, that they hold the copper pipe in place even in high winds. Here's the generator cabinet closed up and locked. The cabinet came with two, sh two shelves and I only needed one, so I turned the second shelf into a canopy over the door to help keep the rain out of the interior. I run the generator about once a month and I also charge the battery then and conveniently this generator comes with a battery charger. I also installed a sprinkler at the wellhead. It's at the top of this pipe and it aims its spray over here to the white tank there that's the pressure tank for the water system. So there are the sprinklers in operation, all three of them. And they spray over a wide area. So I hope you found this video useful and if you're thinking um, of installing sprinklers on your roof, if you live in a fire area, I think it's a very good idea. Thank you.